Hello everyone and welcome to Fly High. This is the second video of our mini-series about hazardous flight conditions and dangerous phenomena. Today we're diving into a critical topic that every pilot and engineer should be familiar with, helicopter ground resonance. Ground resonance is a potentially dangerous phenomenon that can occur when a helicopter is on the ground and its rotor system experiences a specific type of vibration. In this video, we'll explore the causes of ground resonance, its effects, and most importantly, how to prevent it and stop it should it occur. Helicopter ground resonance is characterized by vibrations or rather oscillations or chronic rocking of the fuselage, which becomes increasingly uncontrollable. The helicopter shakes like a wet dog and in just a few seconds self-destructs. Here we have an example from 2012 of a Medivac Eurocopter AS350 helicopter in Para, Brazil. It's reported that there were two pilots and two medics on board and that they all got out without serious injury. As you can see, the helicopter is increasingly shaking itself apart right up until complete destruction. Now, not all helicopters are susceptible to ground resonance. If you fly two-bladed helicopters, you're exempt from experiencing this phenomenon, thanks to their rigid or semi-rigid teetering or seesaw rotor system. Only helicopters with rotor systems that have three or more articulated blades are concerned. It is the lead lag or drag hinge, shown here by the green arrows, that contributes to the phenomenon. It's there to accommodate the blade's speeding up and slowing down tendency at different points while circling the mast in forward flight. It prevents these forces from inflicting excessive stresses on the rotor hub. Snubbers and dampers limit the motions of the blades. So what exactly causes ground resonance? Helicopters will inevitably have small vibrations in the rotor most of the time. This is due to the design and usually it's not a problem. These vibrations are passed from the rotor to the airframe and then dissipated into the air. The rotor is like a flywheel. Its center of gravity should be on the rotational axis. If for some reason the position of the center of gravity shifts slightly, the rotor will be thrown out of balance and will start oscillating like you can see in this example of these wobbly spinning tops. If the helicopter is on the ground, the oscillations can no longer dissipate into the air. A vibration from the rotor will pass through the airframe to the landing gear and then bounce back towards the rotor, only to bounce back again towards the landing gear and so on and so on, creating a ping pong or swinging effect. As the vibrations of the landing gear and the rotor are on the same frequency, the magnitude of the vibrations will accumulate and escalate with each bounce. Let's go back to the swinging example. If you push a child on a swing on a random frequency, there's no real effect. But when you push the child on the same frequency as the swinging, the energy accumulates with every push and the child swings higher and higher. In the same way, the coupled vibrations between the rotor and the landing gear amplifies with each bounce, rocking the helicopter increasingly right up until destruction. The dangers of ground resonance are obviously the potential catastrophic damage to the entire helicopter. Fuel tanks can be ripped off, the engine can also tear off, the pilots and passengers can be injured and even violently ejected from the helicopter in just a few seconds. Ground resonance can be triggered by several factors. More often, it's a combination of multiple factors. Firstly, there are factors regarding the rotor. The rotor blades are normally spread out equally around the hub. For example, a helicopter with three blades will have an angle of about 120 degrees between each blade. If there is a problem with the damper and the blade doesn't move properly, the spacing of the blades becomes irregular. The center of gravity of the rotor is no longer in line with the rotational axis. The rotor is thrown off balance and reacts like a washing machine in a spin cycle with the weight concentrated in one position. Next, let's look at what is called track and balance. The design of the blades enables them to be perfectly balanced in weight and each blade will turn in the same rotational plane. If one blade is slightly damaged or for example, in the case of snow or frost, one blade can have more ice accumulation than the others, or one has absorbed more moisture or even collected more debris, the total mass is unevenly distributed and the blade could rotate slightly higher or lower than the others. 
This creates unusual vertical vibrations and you can feel it in the cyclic and generally it's more of a cause of back pain rather than ground resonance. But if the track and balance is not corrected and it worsens, these vibrations can contribute to the cause of ground resonance. There are also factors regarding the landing gear. Poor maintenance of the shock absorbers or uneven tire pressure can contribute to the helicopter being unbalanced on the ground. There is more of a risk when landing on a slope, on hard, slick surfaces that are not very absorbent, or landing during strong and gusty winds. Structural damage to the helicopter's airframe or rotor system can also lead to ground resonance. This damage may be caused by previous incidents, wear and tear, or improper maintenance. Last but not least, there is the unintended rotor input. If the pilot applies uneven or abrupt cyclic or collective inputs while on the ground, it can trigger ground resonance. It can also happen during a running landing on bumpy terrain or on a hard landing. The bump on impact can unbalance the rotor. So how do we avoid getting into helicopter ground resonance? Good maintenance of the dampers, shock absorbers and landing gear, as well as proper pre-flight inspections of the blades, the rotor head and the landing gear is super important. Always strive for smooth, gentle landings, avoiding slopes, bumpy ground and hard terrains with little absorption. And keep this phenomenon in mind when you can't avoid these types of landings, so that you're ready to react if it does happen. Ground resonance can appear during the startup procedure, while you're picking up into a hover, while you're touching down, or even just after setting the helicopter down on the ground. If you detect an unusual vibration and rocking movement, immediate action is required. The best is to pick up off the ground immediately. If there's enough RPM to pick up, don't hesitate. As soon as the ground contact has been removed, the resonance will stop. Reposition the helicopter and try to set it down again. If on the other hand there isn't enough RPM to hover, the only thing you can do is immediately shut off the engine and apply the rotor brake to stop the blades rotating. Here's a real case scenario where the pilot immediately did the right thing when a gazelle helicopter got into ground resonance. It was during the filming of the episode Deathlock for the MacGyver series in 1986 and you can still watch it today because the producers kept this clip as is. Hats off to the pilot who immediately took off regardless that the door was still open, avoiding a potential accident. So that was the phenomenon of ground resonance. If you fly or work on helicopters with articulated rotor systems, we'll be delighted if you share your experiences in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Fly safe and see you soon on Fly High.